Movies told here, today I am going to explain a drama, crime, mystery movie, called Wind River. Be aware, the video contains spoilers. The story is based on real events. A girl running in the snow barefoot when she falls and starts crying. A wolf gets shot by a hunter, called Cory. Cory then goes to Wilma, his ex-wife and asks her to take their son with him to the Indian Reserve. Wilma agrees but tells Cory to take care of their son and don't lose sight of him. As Cory leaves with Casey, you can feel the tension between Cory and Wilma. Wilma tells Cory that she is going for an interview to another city and if she gets the job, they'll have to talk about Casey's alimony, since the school's and cost of life in Jackson is much higher. Cory reassures her that everything will be okay. Casey's grandfather shows Cory animal traces in the snow and asks Cory to take care of it, whatever it is. Cory then heads to the wild on a snowmobile, to track down the cougars. He finds blood and footprints in the snow, instead of cougars. He continues to follow the footprints in his hunter outfit. He aims his gun at a body as he approaches. He finds a dead girl in the snow, the same girl we saw in the beginning of the film. He calls the local sheriff's office and asks for help. A snowstorm begins and Cory asks the sheriff, named Ben to let him go out again and follow the traces before they disappear. Ben denies his request as he needs permission from the FBI. Cory knows the girl's name is Natalie, since he knows her. As they talk, the FBI arrives. The lady from the FBI introduces herself as Jane Benner. Jane wants to go to the body as soon as possible but Ben and Cory tells her that she would die in the cold before they could reach the body. Casey's grandparents give Jane clothes and tells her to bring them back, since they belong to their granddaughter. Then we see a picture of Cory's daughter, wearing the same outfit. Cory's face freezes for a moment, as he sees Jane in his daughter's clothes. Cory, Jane and Ben head out to the body. Jane examines the body and she declares the case as homicide. Cory tells Jane that Natalie was running all the way until she collapsed. Jane then asks Cory to help her and join her as her assistant in the case. Later that day, Cory explains Casey what happened to Natalie. Casey asks Cory if she died like his sister, Emily. Cory says yes, the cold killed them both. The next day, Jane visits the coroner and the coroner tells her she was raped multiple times and beaten. Jane gets into an argument with the coroner, since he cannot declare the case as homicide. Without a homicide case, Jane is unable to call an FBI team to the reserve and has to solve the case by herself with the local Indian police. Jane and Ben visits the dead girl's parents and they start questioning the father, Martin. Jane's behavior upsets the family as she approaches them without respect and sympathy. Corey knocks on the door, Martin opens it and bursts out in tears. They talk about how Corey processed his daughter's death. Corey tries to confront Martin and he tells him he shouldn't try to avoid the pain, unless he want to forget about the memories of Natalie. Martin tells Corey he is too tired of life and his son is also lost. Martin tells Corey his son is a drug addict and he thinks he has something to do with Natalie's death. Corey tells Martin if he finds out who did it, he'll shoot right away. Jane, Corey and Ben visits Natalie's drug addict brother. Jane and Ben knocks on the door while Corey looks around. A man opens the door while being high on drugs. He sprays them with pepper spray. When they try to run out at the back door, Corey hits them with a shovel, knocking them unconscious. Jane enters the house half-blinded and she gets shot at. The man misses the shot but Jane shoots him multiple times, killing the man. Natalie's brother, Chip learns that his sister is dead. Corey shows Jane how unexperienced she is and she should take his advice and follow him. They find a snowmobile trace leading to the place, where they found Natalie. They follow the trace until they find another body, naked, and frozen. Corey asks to talk to the boys, but Jane refuses since they wouldn't be able to use it on the court. Corey talks to Chip nevertheless. Chip tells him he isn't even an Indian why he cares about the place. Chip tells Corey he met Natalie's boyfriend, an older guy who is a security guard at the drilling rig. Corey visits Wilma and reassures her it isn't about their daughter, Emily. Wilma shuts the door and Corey leaves. Jane meets up with Corey and tells him the man they found in the snow was Matt, a security guard at the drilling rig. Corey invites Jane in and Corey tells Jane about his daughter Emily. Corey tells her he went out with Wilma for dinner and they left Emily with their son Casey. Emily threw a party while their parents were gone and even people they never met showed up for the party. The next day Corey got a call from Natalie and she told him Emily disappeared. A shepherd found Emily's body 30 kilometers from their home, they couldn't find out much since the wolves teared Emily's body to pieces. After some time, 
Corey tells Jane that the dead body was Natalie's boyfriend, since Chip told him earlier. On the next day Corey, Jane, Ben and the local police heads to the drilling rig. Ben feels like they need reinforcements even if only Jane has the authority to act on the drilling rig's ground. The convoy heads to the rig. But Corey takes the high ground with a sniper rifle. When Jane and the police arrives, they pretend they don't know their security guard, Matt is dead. Jane asks the guards what happened to them, since they have bruises all over their face. The guards lead the police and Jane to Matt's cabin but you can feel the tension rising in the atmosphere. Corey finds the cougars and starts following them, when he finds the cougar mother dead, lying on the ground, he starts observing the drilling rig. The guard accidentally reveals he knows about Natalie, even though they never publicly announced it. As the guards start to encircle the police and Jane, they all draw guns at each other. Jane tries to calm down everyone but the sheriff deputy feels like the drill workers just waiting for a moment to shoot them. Eventually, the deputy puts away his gun and they all go to Matt's cabin. Corey tries to reach Ben to warn him, but gets no answer. Jane knocks on Matt's door, where his roommate, Pete is sleeping. We switch to the night when Natalie was killed. Natalie knocks on the door, as Matt opens it. They have an intimate moment and talk about moving to a big city. Matt tells a story about how he spent the Christmas at a beautiful small place near Los Angeles. When he was in the Navy, he wishes to move there, instead of a busy city like New York. As they talk about moving there and living a peaceful life, Matt's drunk co-workers arrive from the city. They thought they are going to stay in the city for the night. The drunk Pete starts harassing Natalie and the others refuse to help out Matt. Matt kicks Pete off the bed but Pete attacks him. Matt starts beating Pete but the others take Pete's side in the brawl. They beat Matt and Natalie unconscious. Natalie wakes up to Pete raping her. As Matt gains consciousness, he starts fighting the drill workers. Natalie gets away barefoot, and runs, while Matt is getting killed by his co-workers. We snap back to the drill, where Jane knocks on Pete's door. While Jane tries to enter the cabin, Corey finally reaches Ben warning him about the guards. Ben tries to warn Jane but she gets shot through the door. They all start shooting each other, Ben gets shot. Jane kills the man, but Pete starts to rain bullets on the police with an automatic rifle. Every policeman is on the ground and the rig guard starts executing the still alive, but down policeman. Jane reloads but a guard takes away her gun. As the guard is about to shoot Jane, Corey blows a hole in his chest with his sniper rifle. Jane takes cover as Corey shoots down the remaining guards. In the cabin, Corey kills the last remaining guard, leaving Pete alone, who tries to escape through a window. Jane shoots and hits Pete, but he runs off into the wild. Corey examines Jane's wounds and says it isn't lethal, since her vest absorbed most of the impact. Jane tells Corey to go and get Pete. Corey tells Jane he won't bring him back, Jane nods and tells him to get him. Pete, wounded and frightened, hears Corey's snowmobile and collapses to the ground. Corey knocks him unconscious. Pete wakes up far away from his cabin. Corey took off Pete's boots. Pete tries to talk himself out of the situation and Corey agrees. Corey says if he tells everything he will give him a second chance. Pete admits that he raped Natalie and beat Matt to death. Corey as promised, cuts the rope on Pete's hand and says he can go. Pete starts to run and about a 100 meters later, he collapses and starts vomiting blood. So he dies, just like Natalie did. In the hospital, Jane is recovering. Then Corey visits Natalie's father, Martin, in Natalie's room. He finds old pictures with her daughter, Emily on them. Martin is sitting outside in his death mask. Martin says he was about to give up, but the phone rang. Chip, his son called him after a year. The film ends with Martin and Corey sitting in silence. Thanks for watching this video. Please, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Turn on notifications, so you never miss a video.